Lucy in? She's at school. <laughs> it's night school. Did she wear a uniform? <laughs> she does now. <laughs> What's she studying? She won't tell me. Oh, why not? She thinks I'll take the mickey. Would you? I'm offended you even have to ask. <laughs> of course I would. Anyway, I just popped round to borrow something from your kitchen. Again? Well, I don't have all the latest fancy gadgets like you and Lucy, do I? All right, what do you want? A teaspoon. <laughs> oh, and an egg as well, please. Is this for some sort of athletics event? <laughs> it's for a recipe. You know how it is, I got halfway through before I realised I needed an egg. What exactly is this recipe? Do you need an egg cup as well? Yeah. <laughs> Here she is, educating Rita. <laughs> I think it's great, Lucy, that you're going back to school in the evenings. In my day, that was called detention. I'm amazed you went to school at all, eh? I thought you spent most days out on the moors with your kestrel. It was tenant super strength, actually. <laughs> Come on, just tell me, what are you studying? OK, I've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I have been doing a training course in counselling. Happy? I think you need to work on your technique. You see, this is why I didn't tell you about it. If only you could get qualifications in sarcasm, eh, Lee? You can. Mock GCSEs. <laughs> I knew you'd be uncomfortable with this. I'm fine with it. Just don't start analysing me. If you want to study the unconscious mind, use Daisy. <laughs> I don't mind. I had to go and see a counsellor very recently, actually. Oh. Do you mind me asking what kind? What do you mean? Well, was it a family counsellor or a grief counsellor? Liberal Democrat thing. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant one that worked in mental health. Well, he did end up telling me I was insane. <laughs> I still don't see why you can't recycle a dead cat. <laughs> well, I'm doing the psychotherapy type of counselling. It's only a night class. I haven't turned into some kind of head shrinker. If you ever want to deny that you're an nymphomaniac, promise you'll speak to me first. <laughs> Be careful with that. I've just bought it. It's an antique phrenology head. Years ago, psychologists thought you could tell someone's personality from reading their skull. I think that's right. You can tell a lot about someone's personality if they write all over their skull. Come <laughs> on, well, Lucy. Why are you really doing all this therapy stuff? I don't know. Self-exploration? The chance to discover something interesting? Personal growth? You should try it. What? Explore myself until I find an interest in personal growth? <laughs> Therapy provides a release of emotion that can be refreshing and invigorating. You make it sound like a shower gel. <laughs> Interesting comparison. You're very much the kind of person who treats his emotion like you treat your shower gel. You keep it bottled up and never let it out. If you insist on buying shower gel called Spring Meadow, you can't expect me to use it out of season. <laughs> Come on, Lucy. What's this really about? Look. At work, all I basically do is try and get as much money out of people as possible. So I decided I wanted to do something where I can use compassion and understanding as a way to... Get as much money out of people as possible. <laughs> what? Oh, come on, I know how it works. Sit down, tell me about your dreams. Well, Doctor, I keep dreaming that I'm back at school, but all the teachers are horses and the knit nurse tries to poke my eye out with a lollipop. Oh, that is simple. The lollipop's your penis. And the horses are a manly urge to sleep with your grandfather. Oh, that will be £200, please. <laughs> You repressed northern twat. <laughs> Instead of taking the piss out of me, perhaps you should be a bit more introspective yourself. That way you might work out a bit more about why you can't do the basics in life, like forming a meaningful relationship with the opposite sex. You self-obsessed, emotionally retarded, egotistical bellend. <laughs> well, you're right, Doctor. It works. I'm certainly feeling better about myself. <laughs> Why am I so big and strong, and you're so small and weak? I've been ill. <laughs> oh. Oh. Blimey. That was close. <laughs> Did you hear that? Lucy reckons that I can't have relationships. What? That's totally ridiculous. Thanks. You're a grown man, you can do whatever you like. No, she means I'm not capable of having relationships. Oh. 
Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> See, you're just not a people person. And a lot of women like a man that is a people person. Like Lucy, she's a people person person. And a people person person tends to prefer other people person people. <laughs> How do you think she feels about pheasant pluckers? <laughs> well, if you want to be Lucy's pheasant plucker, maybe you should stop mocking her therapy course. Who says I want to be Lucy's pheasant plucker? For all you know, I might have my eye on somebody else. Like who? A girl called Susie. She sits in a shoe shine shop. <laughs> Pass the parcel. Boring. Musical chairs. Boring. My mum used to say only boring people find things boring. Your mum sounds tedious. <laughs> Nancy, this is Lee. Hello, Nancy. Why have you got such a big nose? It helps if there's a gas leak. Mum thinks we had a gas leak. She thinks that's why my house burned down and killed my goldfish. Sorry to hear that. What was his name? I didn't give him a name. He was just a dumb fish. He couldn't do anything. He was boring. Well, it's a very touching eulogy. <laughs> so, what are you doing? I'm trying to work out some things to do for Nancy's party tomorrow, but we're struggling a bit, aren't we, Nancy? We? You're the adult. I'm just a child. Oh, come on. We're not falling for that. You're a middle-aged woman who obviously smoked too much. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I can help. So, uh, what were you gonna do before, you know, plans changed? Have some friends round for a party, but it's not what I really wanted to do. Well, what did you really want to do? Take all my friends to watch JLS at Wembley. The tickets are only £80 each. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy, we can't afford that sort of thing. You two must be really poor. Don't worry, we've got other plans. What about hide and? You mean hide and seek? No, no, we're not going to come looking for you. <laughs> I know. What about a magician? OK, if I have to. Great! Well done. I'll, um, I'll book one straight away. This game is going on forever. You shouldn't suck your thumb. It'll give you buck teeth. You'll end up looking like a rabbit. Better than looking like a fat whippet. <laughs> That's what my mum said you looked like. Well, she was probably just having a joke. She said you didn't want to have my party here because you were selfish. You abused your friendship with Lucy, you probably hated children, and you looked like a fat whippet. See, it's not so bad, but it's in context. <laughs> And I'll tell you what else she said. Just put your thumb back in your mouth. <laughs> it's no good. There are no magicians available at such short notice. My party is going to be rubbish. If you can't get a magician, you have to take me and my friends to see JLS. I'm not taking you anywhere. You're rubbish at organising things. I know. Why don't we have a think about what food you'd like? I don't care, as long as he doesn't smell it with his big nose. <laughs> at least I don't suck my thumb, you loser. At least I don't cheat at Monopoly. I didn't cheat. I saw you steal a get-out-of-jail-free card. When it comes to a man's liberty, sometimes you've got to make difficult choices. Cheat. Thumb sucker. Big nose. Girl. Have you finished? I knew you'd take her side. I'm not taking sides. You're a fully grown adult. Well, you might want to remember that next time you talk to me like I'm a child. I don't talk to you like you're a child. I just go. Where? To your room. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm not staying here and listening to little Linda Blur. That's not funny. Only because you don't get it. It was a film about a demonic little girl whose head span round until she vomited the devil out of her gob. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just watch Toy Story 2. We've got both. Right, we're at 4,000 feet. So, just like we did in training, I'll attach the clip like this. You'll jump and your chute opens automatically. Any questions? What time's a drink trolley coming round? <laughs> what if the cord gets pulled too hard and it comes off? It won't. It might. I did that with the bathroom light once. <laughs> OK, I'll let you know when we're ready to rock. I am so excited. Have you ever done this before, Lee? Uh, I did one of those tandem skydives. Was it all OK? Yeah, but the bicycle was a rise off. <laughs> He's never done a skydive before, Mum. None of us have. Not true. 
I made a number of jumps during my army days. In the catering court? <laughs> I think you're mixing the words up, jumps and soups. Quite an experience, I can tell you. Everyone's staring at each other in nervous silence without so much as a cup of tea to take your mind off things. Then without warning, you're shoved out the door. Sounds like the last time we visited your house, Jeffrey. <laughs> your first time as well then, Frank. Sure is. Oh, come on, Frank. You're forgetting that time you were ejected from the EasyJet flight to Glasgow. <laughs> you all right, Mum? Not really. It seemed like a fun idea when Toby first suggested it, but now we're so high up, I'm having second thoughts. Well, if you're feeling nervous, just think of all the money we're raising for the hospital. Everybody's done a great job. Yeah. Even Anna's been very supportive. What do you mean, even Anna? I'm sorry, darling, I didn't mean... Trust me. I'd never pass off the opportunity of seeing you fall out of an aeroplane. <laughs> you seem very relaxed about this, Lee. But I can't wait. It's one of these things you've got to do before you die. Just hopefully not immediately before you die. <laughs> OK, I need everyone to listen up. I'm afraid we've got a problem. What problem? What's gone wrong? There's absolutely nothing to worry about. But I'll somehow manage to make a real cock-up. Please accept my sincere apologies. But I've only loaded six parachutes for seven people. You mean one of us has got to jump without a parachute? <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't mean that. Don't put him off if he's keen. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that one of you can't do the jump. Well, whose parachute are you missing? Uh, let's see. Remind me, which one of you is Wendy? Me. Right, we've definitely got yours. <laughs> And let's see, we've got uh, Toby's, we've got Lucy's, we've got Frank's, uh, we've got Jeffrey's. Oh, get on with it, Simon Cowell, and just announce the loser. <laughs> Lee, yours is missing. How? Mistakes happen, I'm afraid. Not the words you want to hear from a parachute company. <laughs> Didn't they teach you how to count in Australia? No, because I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> same thing. Well, they're next to each other, so they're not the same thing. What, you mean a bit like the numbers six and seven? <laughs> Look, of course we'll arrange for you to come back at a later date, free of charge, Lee. But the charity event is today. Yeah, the local press photographers are down there waiting for us, and I promised the kids I'd be in the paper. You just have to go back to Plan A and rob a post office. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lee, it must be really disappointing for you. There is another option. What? Well, it's clear I'm not exactly keen. Why not take my parachute? Absolutely not. Why? Because I don't want your day spoiled. Spoiled? I'm terrified. And that's the reason you should jump. My commanding officer always used to say, when you have a fear, you need to deal with it. Head on. <laughs> Same reason I showed up to Lee and Lucy's wedding. <laughs> I don't want to jump. Look, I do feel somewhat responsible as the organiser, so... Probably it should be me that misses out. Oh, don't be so bloody obliging, Toby. My God. You'd give up your place in our bed if someone asked you politely. <laughs> Toby, please. That wasn't a genuine offer. <laughs> Look, I don't care about jumping either way. I'll happily miss out. No, 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 no. I'm too much of a gentleman to see a lady disappointed. Lee, take my parachute. It's OK, Frank. I'm not disappointed. I just want Lee to get his turn. He can have mine. Honestly, I insist. Well, here's a rich display of humbuggery. <laughs> you are? That's obvious. You're all terrified. In fact, Wendy's the bravest one among you. At least she has the courage to admit to her fears. Now, would anyone else like to offer to stay behind? No, I thought not. So that settled. Lee, you can take my parachute. <laughs> You're as scared as the rest of us. Not so. I overcame any misgivings I might have had one night in a military transport aircraft over Belize. Nobody wants to know you pop your cherry. <laughs> I was part of a special operations team. Officially, we didn't exist. Oh, here we go. A load of nonsense about pervert operations. <laughs> pervert! He could tell us, but then he'd have to kill us. <laughs> I might just tell Frank. <laughs> I'm merely saying that I'm the only one here with nothing to prove. Believe me, Frank, if ever we find ourselves doing a sponsored benefit fraud, I'll be sure to defer to your experience. <laughs> Looks like Lee and I are the only ones looking forward to this. Well, I'm happy to admit I'm nervous. So I would like to give Lee my parachute. No. 
I would. No. I offered first. I think you'll find I did. No, I did. Don't stop bickering with each other. There's only one person to blame for this. We wouldn't be in this situation if Dame Edna was doing his job properly. I'm a Kiwi. I don't care if you're a watermelon, mate. <laughs> you have ruined our day out. Look, I've said I'm sorry, guys. How hard can it be? You count the parachutes, you take them off that blue rack, you load them onto the plane. Job done. How did you know they were on a blue rack? <laughs> what? You just said the packs were stored on a blue rack. That's back at base behind a door marked private. You shouldn't have been in there. So what were you doing in a private area? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Why not? It's private. It's quite clear what he was doing in there. He was hiding his parachute. Suddenly that display of bravado makes perfect sense. He was looking forward to the jump because he knew he wouldn't have to do it. Is that right, Lee? Oh, of course it bloody is. Have you seen how high up these planes go? I'd rather jump out of a birthday cake at Wormwood Scrubs dressed as Marilyn Monroe. 